This is Behind the Mic with Audiophile Magazine. Alan Minskoff is with me, and he's with me for the whole week, and we're getting his takes on what he's listening to and what he thinks about it. Hi, Alan. How are you? I'm good, Joe. And now we get back to fiction. Okay. After after saving the planet, we get back to fiction. Today's listen is the redoubtable Haruku Murakami's first-person singular. And, of course, we, we might add at the beginning that he is kind of the John Updike from Japan. <laughs> so I never heard that, but that's so good. He's, he's prolific. Very much so. He is prolific. This is his 22nd book. That's a lot. It is a lot. And yet this is very much worth listening to. It may not be the, the, the highest point in the pantheon, but it's very much worth listening to. I mean, he is a man of great imagination and, and real uh, culture. And both of those come through in this in this group of short stories. So who's the narrator? It's Kotaro Watanabe. And he is he is I couldn't tell whether he was originally Japanese, who is now fluent in English, or if he is uh if his native language is English and he's bilingual. But he reads in a measured and inflected tone that kind of lulls the readers into these stories that are, you know, like I said, they are magic realism. One of the ones that is one of his most popular stories is in this collection, and it's the one about the Shinagawa monkey, in which the protagonist meets a talking monkey who has a a big problem. He steals women's identities. So the name of the story, because it's a very famous one, is called Confessions of the Shinagawa Monkey. Murakami has been criticized for really having one-dimensional women often in his stories who who serve as either sex objects or, or catalysts for men to, you know, work out their own lives. Is that true in this collection as well? Or I mean, do you see anything that's been worked through? I think in this in the story, which is a, an interesting story called Carnival, there's there must be I know our five or eight minute digression on women's looks, which I just had that thought run through my mind that that this is really one dimensional. Uh huh. But with that said, even in that story, there's also the Murakami who is the aesthete, who's the enthusiast, because there's a wonderful appreciation of Schumann's Carnival and of Bruckner. So he's he's not a Totally a, a, a one trick pony, obviously. Yeah. No, I wouldn't think so. I mean, he's just he's just done too much for for that, and not you know, and not everybody's perfect. Let's face it. No question. Yeah. Why don't we hear a little bit now? Okay, so this is from the 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 lead story in the collection called Cream, and uh, I think it it explains itself. This is first person singular by Haruki Murakami. Translated by Philip Gabriel, and it's read by Kotaro Watanabe. The recital hall was at the top of one of the mountains in Kobe. I took the Hankyu train line as close as I could, then boarded a bus that made its way up a steep, winding road. I got off at a stop near the very top, and after a short walk, arrived at the modest sized concert venue, which was owned and managed by an enormous business conglomerate. I hadn't known that there was a concert hall here, in such an inconvenient spot, at the top of a mountain in a quiet, upscale residential neighborhood. As you can imagine, there were plenty of things in the world that I didn't know about. Yeah, I like that there's a slight accent that's very compelling, and I also like his phrasing and his tonality. Yes, he's a fine he's a fine reader, and especially when there's so much, of course, that is you know set in Japan, and from the baseball teams to the kinds of things they eat to the the names of the streets, and he's extremely good for that because you need that. I have a, a line about his delivery, and I do say that he has a kind of you know flat delivery that makes the plot unfold like a morning paper, and I, I like that because oh, the, that's a nice line. Well, it's what it felt like because you you know how the morning paper goes: you open it and you're just pulled in, or you keep moving, and and he does that with the stories. The stories sometimes not a whole lot happens, mm -hmm. and and that and that's his style as well. And yet there are some stories which really stay with you. Uh, there's a story about a Tonka poet. It's a one-night stand story, and yet I had to, I, not only to stay with me, but then I went on and I looked up about the poetry. So 
there's something in, in Murakami beyond his limitations. Yeah, I would think so. I would hope so. I mean, you know, as I said, not everybody can do everything, nor should they. Okay, so that was First Person Singular by Hunuki Murakami, read by Katara Watnabe, and translated by Philip Gabriel. Alan, thank you so much. I will talk to you tomorrow. You're welcome, and I look forward to it. Today's episode of Behind the Mic is brought to you by Penguin Random House Audio, publishing the finest fiction and nonfiction audiobooks for adults and children. Visit penguinrandomhouseaudio.com slash audiophile today and start listening. And follow Behind the Mic wherever you get your podcasts and then leave us a rating on Apple because it helps people to find us. I'm Joe Reed. Talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>